Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny to all of my returning subscribers. Hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, kick your feet up, subscribe to this family friendly channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Also follow me on Instagram at the same profile name so you don't miss the sneak peeks of what's coming up next. In this video is Delilah season one, episode three entitled Sometimes Apart. I give a full episode recap with photos offset to the side and then I give my review at the end. No need to dig around. I have all of the minute marks in the comments. It's all coming up next. We pick up right where we left off from the previous episode and Delilah confronts Leah about the photos. And Leah wants to know, well, where did you get those? And Delilah says, from your previous boss, you said you didn't have any type of intimate relationship with this man, but, but you lied. Why? And Leah claims that she didn't think that it would be such a big deal. Delilah completely ignores calls over and over again from Nate because she has to get to the root of everything. Delilah wants to know, how did you two meet? And Leah explains that we met online and he was looking for women that he could date discreetly. I mean, he paid my rent and stuff. And then his last assistant, she quit and he asked me if um, I'd be interested. So it kind of just worked itself out. Delilah gets a text message from Tam asking, so do we have a deal? Delilah explains everything. Look, Leah, Fred has a deal on the table. Five years salary with the signing of an NDA and handing over all of your technologies, your phone, laptop, anything they request. It's only the first offer and we haven't even discovered all of the details. Now, when did this relationship end or, or did it? When did he hire you? And Leah says a year after we stopped talking and then he moved on to someone else. So it worked itself out and they kept me as the assistant. Harper barges in and says, well, the reporter is here and Delilah complains that they're super early. The reporter isn't scheduled until 11 a.m. And Harper says, well, she's here. So Delilah's just like, wow, okay. Well, just let them know to give us a minute. And Leah wants to know, did I mess up? Delilah says, look, you didn't mess up. I just wish you would have told me certain details before I agreed to this reporter coming over. Just remember, don't bring up anything about a relationship with Fred. Just go right into the information and curiosities you had with Gary and how you found it suspicious. And now all of a sudden he's dead. So just get into that. Don't let the reporter sway you to anything that has anything to do with a relationship or anything online. Leah, we are in this case together, okay? And you gotta promise me that you're gonna tell me everything. You, you can't lie. Do you promise? And Leah looks at her and says, I promise. Leah begins the interview with the reporter, with Delilah to the side, listening and observing the whole thing. Leah goes on to explain that in passing, she asked Fred about these C-15 radios and why Gary was wondering about them. And they seemed kind of dangerous. Next thing I know, I was fired. And the reporter asked, so these C-15s, they're radios, special kind of radios? Leah says, yeah, you know, they constantly change their frequencies and they keep from, you know, enemies from listening, you know, and jamming it up. So it seems kind of dangerous. The reporter says to Delilah, so did you know anything about these radios before taking this case? Delilah says, no, my brother is in the military, but it makes sense. The reporter says, well, what could be so wrong with a radio that it would have this concern from Gary Shea? And Leah says, that's what I want to know. Delilah's phone is ringing off the hook and there's only so many more times she can ignore Nate's phone call. And she says, you know what, you guys, can we just take a quick pause? This is my brother calling me. It, it might be an emergency. And the reporter says, sure. <laughs> After Delilah leaves the room, the reporter says to Leah, you know, you're in good hands here. And uh, Leah says, I know, she's great. Delilah speaks with Nate and Nate says, um, Christine called and said you went over to her house and yelled at her about Dion. 
And Delilah was like, didn't nobody yell at that girl? I didn't yell at anyone. What are you talking about? <laughs> and Nate's like, that's not what she says. And Delilah was just like, you know, I'm in a meeting right now. And Nate snaps at her and says, well, don't answer the phone then. And hangs up. And of course, Delilah is frustrated with just everything going on. Before she enters the room, Harper wants to know, so how's it going in there with the reporter? Delilah says, you know what? Unexpectedly well. Delilah walks into the room and Lee and the reporter are talking about other things, about how they met on the website and other men that she's talking to. And Delilah says, how long has this been recording? The reporter says, oh, it wasn't about the radios. And Delilah says, wait a minute, where are you going? And the reporter lets her know that I have everything that I need. Delilah says, wait until Barbara hears about this. Harper, get Barbara Jenkins on the phone right now. And Harper's confused about what's going on. Leah is getting on Delilah's last nerve asking, did I mess up? And Delilah's looking at her like, you think? Someone comes to the front door and says, um, Delilah Calloway? She's like, yes, that's me. What do you want? And the young lady says, hi, I'm Hala Brooks from the Charlotte Observer. And immediately they know that that reporter wasn't the reporter at all. D updates Mace about everything that happened. And Mace is like, you think that the Osborne company sent her there? Do you really think Tamara would do something like that? And Delilah says, you know, it's highly likely. I mean, I don't even know anymore. They have enough evidence to say against Leah that she's some high profile escort or a gold digger after Fred's money. I mean, they can use this in court. Mace uses facial recognition to identify this fake reporter. Kat Matthews says here that she's an actress and uh, she's done a lot of mock runs for Tamara's firm. Meanwhile, Tamara's in her office looking at Mia's concert footage. She gets a call and Delilah is screaming, how dare you send over this actress to act like a reporter? Tamara stops the video and she's just like, I have no clue what you're talking about. Why don't you calm down and why don't we talk about this together because I'm clueless. When she's talking to Delilah, Tamara gets this voice memo on her computer and it's of this actress asking these questions for Leah. And Delilah hangs up. Tamara is clearly upset and you can tell that it's bothering her. Tamara storms into Wynn Jr.'s office, wanting to know, really, you sent an actress? And Wynn says, let me guess, um, this is about the reporter? <laughs> Did you listen to the entire memo? I mean, if the other lawyer wasn't your friend, would you be so upset? I mean, you didn't seem furious when we were using evidence in the Bean case. And Tamara expresses that that's not the way she works. And if she had known that this is the way they accumulate evidence, it would have changed her mind about the firm completely. And also that Wynn Jr. should wake up because all his father does is use everyone, including him. Dee hooks up with Harper to call her and let her know if Mace calls with any more information concerning that reporter, please give me a call. And also make sure that that ethics complaint is upheld by the Charlotte Bar. Dee wants to have a heart to heart with Nate and letting him know that there's something that's up. And Nate just says that Andre's just a friend and he even introduced him to Christine. Delilah is just like, you know what? You are in complete denial. I mean, you messed up and now you think that no one's going to love you again because you're in that chair. But she's not on your side. Come on. She's living on your dime. She's in there with an, another guy in your house that's a friend. And you're acting like everything is just okay. She doesn't take care of your son. And Nate has had it and says, you know what, Delilah? Get out. Get <laughs> out. Delilah takes a beat and says, I'm gone. She goes outside to just collect herself, but she's just in shock that she's just trying to help him and he's talking to her the way that he is. Maya informs her mom that Miss Virginia wants to meet with her the next day at 3 p.m. She wants to reschedule, but kind of lets her know, look, this woman wants to train me and teach me for free. 
Delilah's like, okay, I'll, I'll be there. Marcus comes in late and D is upset and wants to know why are you coming in so late? He doesn't think it, it's a big deal and he's been at the park. But D says that's unacceptable and I want your phone for a week because you keep disobeying me. You're coming in late and I just want you to be safe. It falls on deaf ears. He gives her the phone, but he has this energy like he doesn't care. Dee then calls her ex-husband, Gordon, to talk to him about Marcus and saying that, you know what? You're kind of giving him this energy when you talk on the phone that he can stay out late and he can do all of this. When I'm a black woman trying to tell this young black boy that he needs to be at home safe and you're just acting like you don't care. Gordon's girlfriend, new girlfriend, or boo, hears the conversation over the phone and just says, you know what? Just hang up. Don't even listen to her. T vents to Casey about how she doesn't know what to say to Delilah and how she didn't like that whole actress thing any more than she did. Casey tells her, you know what? Just calm down. She's like, no, you know what? It should be illegal to pretend to be somebody else. And Casey says, well, it's a misdemeanor if you're causing harm to the person you're impersonating. <laughs> T's like, wait, <laughs> how do you know that? And he tells her this story about how he and Jamal, they uh, impersonated some architects just so they could go to the top of this Willis Tower when it was close to the public in exhibition game between the White Sox and the Knights. And uh, when the cops caught him, they got off with a warning. And T says, wow, the uh, deputy mayor is running cons in Chicago. Wow, I, I guess I'll be fine. <laughs> and he says, well, you know, um, it's not a big deal. They sit down and T says, um, how did Jamal do that? I mean, how did he get access to the building? And Casey's like, well, Jamal has this card, you know, I'll show it to you. And he starts to kiss all on T. And T says, you know, how many times have I said, don't use sex as a distraction, but it's a distraction. And unfortunately, T doesn't ask any more questions. Jamal calls Delilah and asks if it's too late to talk, but she insists, no, it's okay. But, um... How did you get this number? And he tells her that Tamara gave it to him and that it would be a good idea if he gave her a call. And he acts like, you know, he's clueless and says, I hope that's okay. Now I was like, yeah, it's just really weird. You know, you got my number, but you know what? It's okay. It's just that, um, yeah, we're on this case together and... It's this tension between her and I. And Jamal says, yeah, you know, Casey told me all about it. And Delilah says, you know what? Um, once this case is done, we can circle back. Jamal says, well, you know, I, I pray that this case is over soon so we can see each other. And Delilah says, you, you pray? And he says, yeah, is that a problem? She's like, no, I just... You know, I just got in this habit of not going to church, and it's been a long time, and I just really need to start going again. <laughs> Jamal says, oh, you know, first I can't get a date with you, and now I make you feel bad about not going to church. This is the worst first phone call ever. Dada says, no, it's okay. Just, um, just give me some time. And he says, I'll check back with you in a little while. It's an early morning and Demetria is on the porch of the firm and waves at Harper as she's driving by. And Harper says through the window, hey, you're here like super early. Demetria's like, yes, you know, it's my big first day. Gotta get an early start, right? And Harper's like, yeah, right. <laughs> I'll be right in. And she drives to the back and opens the front door for Dimitri instead of the other way around. Dimitri says, oh, girl, that's uh, quite the ride you got there. I'm guessing I'll get my own key. <laughs> I'll get my own, right? Correct? And Harper says, yes, it's actually on your desk. And Demetria says, oh, that's good. Excuse me. <laughs> As she slides her way into the door. 
Harper gives Demetria a very quick tour of the office and shows her to her work area. And Demetria wants to know who set up this workspace because she's not impressed. And Harper says, well, I did. <laughs> so there's definitely some tension in the room. Delilah thanks Demetria and congratulates her on her first day and wants her to dive right in to where she's needed. Delilah gives her the scoop about this Osborne case and Demetria knows all about the company, what they do, who the CEO is, and she gives it all thanks to the Charlotte Chamber of Congress newsletter. Delilah wants Demetria to go through the files and see if there's any information of wrongdoing, any irregularities, and wear latex gloves while looking at these documents because they may be needed in a murder case. Dee says, I want you to scan and bait stamp the documents. And Demetria says, you know, the MD5 is more precise and it's the more standard. And Delilah says, you know, I'm kind of a bait stamp kind of girl. And um, yeah, just get to it when you can. She walks down the hallway and Delilah asks Harper, what is the MD5? And Harper says, oh, it's a new system for labeling evidence. She says, oh, hmm. We then see a clip of Nate calling someone saying, I need help dealing with someone. Being more specific, Delilah. Gordon ends a call with someone until his new boo walks in the door and asks if she's interrupting anything special. He tells her no. And she informs him that the landlord is selling the property and her roommate is moving in with someone else. So it only makes sense that since they've been together for about a year, that she should move in. But he's not too happy. He's not too pleased about that. And says, you know, I haven't even told Delilah about us. She's frustrated and can't understand why he doesn't want her to move in and why she still hasn't met his kids. And she says, you know, the least you could do is let me stay here and do my schoolwork. And he agrees and says, yeah, that's fine. Delilah finally gets to meet with Virginia and wants to know what's the deal because nobody does anything for free. Virginia explains that Maya is underdeveloped talent and the global symphonic world is not full of people that look like us. Delilah says, I'm sure. And I'm... <laughs> Love that you have an admirable goal. But Virginia says, you know what? I'm guessing that by the fluidity of how the violin was purchased, that you don't have any extra income for lessons. Yet you still seem reluctant. You will have a nice life if you allow your daughter to follow her dreams. Maya is in the hallway and saying, I can't hear a thing. I mean, I don't know what they're talking about. And her friend just keeps her occupied by saying, you know, why don't you play this at nationals? Delilah walks outside and says, you know what? Yes, to her lessons. And of course, Virginia gives her her first lesson in date and time, Thursday, 5 p.m. And make sure that you finish your homework before you arrive. Harper is shutting down shop, but notices that Demetria is still full steam ahead looking at documents. She's already created a system. And she says, you know what? This office will look so much better once I get some different lighting and my plants. Yeah, so you have a wonderful evening, Harper, and I, I'll make sure to close up with my key. Harper then leaves, and then as Demetria is looking at some documents. Something catches her eye. Mace takes some time to speak with Dee, and they talk about how they're finally able to have dinner and talk and just chill out, and that he can only guess that the new employee that he got is a woman because she could never find another guy to satisfy her and to get what she needs. There's this awkward silence, and it's evident that Mace wants a little bit more than just a friendship. He insists that they play Uno and have a good time, but Delilah's just like, nah, you know, I think Dion left those cards at the VA, so maybe another time. There's a knock at the door, and it's Mr. Connolly, her dad, and he's there to pick up Dion. But Delilah is confused, and she says, Nate wants him to stay with us for a while. And, uh... Delilah's not having it and wants to know, why are you picking him up? He already has something solid here and you're taking him away. And he says, so you being the fancy lawyer, you tell me, is Nate within his right to say where he wants his son to be located? 
Yes or no? And Delilah says, you know what? Wait here. She goes in to pick up Dion and Marcus sees her picking him up and says, oh, is he finally leaving? And Delilah's just saying, no, stop it. I need a minute to speak with Dion alone. She takes him in the back and Dion's confused and wants to know why is his papa coming to pick him up? She says, you know what? And he says, did I do something wrong? Delilah's like, you know what? You didn't do anything wrong. I mean, see, some people feel that maybe you should, you know, give me a second. Delilah then goes back outside and tells him that you've got some nerve to come here and try to remove this young man from his Something that makes him happy, being with me, being with his aunt. And you're trying to appease Nate at his worst? You should be ashamed of yourself. If you want to come back with with a warrant, then fine, do that. But I'm not taking this. Delilah is very upset, slams the door, and apologizes to Marcus for her tone and snapping at him. And then we hear the doorbell ring again. And Delilah's just like, wow, he can't just take no for an answer. She goes back to the front door and it's Tamara. And she says, look, I'm upset about the whole fake reporter thing and that wasn't me. Let's just eat, drink wine like old times and and, and let's just have fun. But Delilah's just saying, you know what? I'm filing an ethics complaint with the bar. All I need is who did it? Was it was it Wynn Jr.? Is that who did it? Tamara's just saying, look, let's just... <sighs> Let's just separate that right now, the case and our friendship, and let's just take a minute. Mason, tell her to chill, but Mason doesn't say anything. He kind of stays out of it and keeps cooking with the children in the kitchen. And Delilah says, you know what, Tam, I see what you're trying to do here. Thank you. I love you, but I'm just not at the capacity to talk right now. It's a lot going on. Tamara says, look, remember, we, we got a deal as friends. We don't go to bed angry. I mean, I'm going to go home. You're going to call me later just to tell me how you feel. So you might as well just call me now. Go ahead, pull out your phone and call me now. There's a chuckle that Delilah tries to hide. And Tamara says, is that a smile? But Delilah looks like, look, I can't. I'm not at the capacity, okay? My dad just came over here trying to pull Dion away. And I just can't do this right now. So I'm sorry. Tam says, okay. Okay, I love you guys. Mason, I love you. Mason waves goodbye and she leaves. Maya asked her mom, are you guys still friends? You're friends still, right? She says, yeah, I mean, as friends, I mean, sometimes you're together and sometimes apart. So, yeah. Then there's another bell ring. Delilah has had it. She goes to the door, opens it, and it's Demetria. Demetria says, you know, I know I look a hot mess right now, but I took several buses to get here and a blue line. Um, so I got something to show you. They're looking at documentation and Delilah's just like, this is called the equipment malfunction for a so-called accident? Why is it labeled like this? Why, why is the verbiage so funny? And Mace confirms that it's the army way. And Demetrius says, you know, there's more documentation at the office that has more verbiage and it's explained in more detail. But, I mean, they pretty much all say the same thing. And Demetrius says, you know what? The fact that you said that this is army talk, I mean, I, I really salute you for your service. And I'm aware of the hardships of how much you dedicate. I mean, you dedicate your lives, your soldiers to the country. Makes it's like, thank you. Yes. Can we get back to the documentation? Demetria stresses this very important piece of evidence. And she says it's about Nate and the account of what happened. It's labeled as an equipment malfunction. But Delilah's like, wait, he told Christine that he was ambushed. I mean, he always said that he couldn't remember what happened up until that point before, but he knew that he was ambushed. He was definitely ambushed. And Demetria says, does he have a copy of this report? Marcus says he must. I mean, they must have sent it to him at one point, but whether he kept it is another issue. Seems like you uh, got to talk to Nate, Delilah. And that 
is the end of the episode. Okay, you guys, so another interesting episode. It's like, really, Delilah? You leave your client in the room with a reporter just trusting that they'll abide by your client correctly? Ooh, distracted by a phone call. Not really too smart, homie, but she did it anyway. You knew how Leo was, but you left her alone with the reporter. And Harper has really been slipping on a lot of stuff. What's up with that? You didn't ask for any identification, ID, anything? <laughs> from the newspaper, your driver's license, nothing. You just trusted somebody there that was super early to just come in and talk to your boss. And then also, you just kind of barge in when she's talking to her client and says, hey, well, the reporter's here. I mean, she's here. What do you want me to do about it? You just slipping. You're slacking on your pimping, girlfriend. Also, another thing that was interesting is that there's been a few slip-ups with Harper, right? She knew about the MD5 evidence labeling but she didn't update or suggest it to her boss. She also knew about the template, right? In episode one, that wasn't correct. She knew about it, but she didn't bring it to the table. <laughs> These are the things that you're getting paid to know about. And do we label her as lazy or shady? Like, it seems like Demetria is pointing out some things there about her that's pretty interesting. Demetria did mention, hey, that's a nice car you got there which is expensive I, I don't remember if it was a BMW or what I don't know it was a luxury vehicle are you getting there with your salary is that you know something we need to know about shady boots interested in boots I need I need Demetria to swerve on in there and kind of do her investigation and find out what's going on because as I said in the first uh, two episodes I don't know if we can trust Harper and I don't know if we can trust Demetria it's just kind of like this phase of who do we trust and I'm kind of leaning over towards Demetria because she notices every single detail. Harper's already feeling and acting some sort of way, letting her in, coming through the back, opening the front door, really not having a welcoming, you know, office area to a new employee. It's kind of like, girl, I don't know if I should trust you. And like I said, are you being lazy or are you being shady, girl? I don't know. Demetria, if she can't be trusted, I need you to go ahead and point her out and find out what's going on because I just really don't trust this character. I'm just clueless. I'm just, everybody's a suspect at this point. Jamal. I told y'all, I told y'all something was fishy about Jamal, uh, Jamal, <laughs> Jamal and Casey. I said in the first, uh, in the last episode, is Jamal like an escort or him and Casey doing things political to get their ways? I mean, you're already kind of letting the cat out the bag that y'all sneaking in the buildings and y'all getting away with little misdemeanors and small crimes here and there. That lets me know both of you guys do shady stuff. So highly likely Casey has filled in Jamal to distract Delilah, right? Clearly, because he got her number without her permission. And I doubt, which we will find out in another episode, that Tamara gave him her number. Like, that doesn't seem like her style. I mean, a lawyer like herself would just be giving out another person's number. Like, yeah, it doesn't seem too feasible, something that she would do. Also, Tamara, I think that slowly and surely you were finding out more about your shady firm and William Jr. Oh, excuse me, Wynn Jr. Um, will this make her leave? Because now she's getting the inclination of, wow, all these cases that I'm winning and this so-called evidence that comes across my table, is this evidence that is received um, illegally? Is this something that I need to be concerned about? Because she was really, really concerned when there was this voice memo from this, this actress and that she was asking her client all of these questions like she was a real reporter. So highly likely later on, in the season, it could be some foreshadowing that she finds out that her law firm is super duper 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 shady. Um, but but it just seems like Delilah, she she's letting her emotions get the best of her, and she's really kind of slipping and falling in some certain areas. Not only with the reporter and not asking for any type of identification and validating if that was her. It's just kind of like okay, everybody has their ups and their downs, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Harper. 
what's the issue with you having an issue with Demetria? And like I said, maybe she has that feeling like, oh, she's snooping around and asking too many questions. Or is it just because this is a new employee and she feels like that was kind of like her zone to take care of everything? Also, Mace, you want you want you some Delilah or no? You want you some a Delilah with two scoops? I don't know. I mean, you know, you're talking about, you know, cooking and let's play Uno and looking her deep in the eyes all on the couch and everything. Okay. Will we have a backstory of Mace always wanting her all along and he was the one that always loved her, even though she was with her ex? And I'm pretty sure that will play in there as well. Um, and did Nate, yeah, Nate, her brother, did he take a, a, a bribe? Did he forget that he exposed the truth and saying that he was ambushed? Uh, why lie about that? Are, were you were you bribed by the Osborne? company did they threaten you uh oh, really interesting and Nate, i'm gonna need you and christine to get it together because your sister is taking care of your child and your wife is at home with your homie doing who knows what uh so i need you to get to get get that together because when he when he told her well if you busy don't answer the phone i would have been like you know what look i'll be right back i'm gonna come drop your son off because you because you're tripping delilah got way more patience than i do i don't know honestly with this show you guys uh, it seems really soap opera-ish and it's kind of like I'm locked in now because, you know, I just kind of want to know what, what the secrets are and I want to know how it's going to end. You know, I really just want to like stop right now, but it's only, you know, you guys, the third episode. So I'm going to hang in there and give it a chance. <laughs> Let me know what you thought about this episode. Um, looks like so far so good. My predictions about Nate were correct my predictions about jamal casey and something wasn't right with them it's just really just kind of putting clues together to to, to think who's working for osborne who's working for these shady companies and who can we trust there's really nobody we can trust right now and then also it was kind of odd how mace is using a uh, face recognition technology but you're an undercover agent and who gave you this authority to just use this up in your house I you know, trust nobody at this point. Uh, <laughs> let me know what you think. Subscribe. Tell friends and family about this channel. Check out Queen Sugar. We have Iyanla coming up soon. It's the last six episodes. Because if you all know, Iyanla decided to quit the Iyanla show to move on to other endeavors. And also, we have The Handmaid's Tale. That's right around the corner. Got a lot of stuff coming. Your girl is going to be busy. So, I love you guys. Just stay safe. Take care of yourself and others. Let me know your comments. Let me know what you thought about this episode. Do you like Delilah? Do you not? Is it too much? Oh, before I forget, y'all, what was up with the name that they gave Gordon's little, little girlfriend or whatever? You know, in that scene where she's talking about how, you know, she won't have anywhere to live in three weeks and, you know, just let her stay there until she can get things together. She starts to walk out the room and he was like, Katya. I'm like, <laughs> For real? Okay, okay. And it was just an awkward scene because she was leaving. And he says her name like Katya. It's like, uh, okay. Now I'm not laughing at her name. It's just like this awkward name. And he just calls out and there's like this five second delay on the next line. It was just weird. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Subscribe, all that good stuff. Click the notification bell. Get ready for some more shows that are coming on. Stay tuned for Friday. We got the first part of Bell Collective Reunion. Make sure that you check that out. In the meantime, take care of yourself and others. Love y'all. Bye.